is a special presentation of ABC Sports. Big Ten teams occupied five of the AP's top 20 spots last week. However, it was a week of upsets for Big Ten schools as only Michigan survived the week unblemished. The conference race is tight and made this a must game for both teams as second-ranked Illinois visits ninth-rated Iowa. The Illini transition game rides on the power and emotion of their senior forward Kenny Battle and an aggressive ball hawking attack on defense. That's Iowa senior Ed Horton has developed into a dominant force up front for the Hawkeyes. While backcourt stars B.J. Armstrong and Roy Marble are also averaging over 18 points a game. Today, a Big Ten battle, Illinois and Iowa. Like conditions have descended upon the Midwest and in particular Iowa City, the site of today's game. Carver Hawkeye Arena, a Big Ten clash between second ranked Illinois and the ninth rated Hawkeyes of Iowa. As we complete the first weekend to play in February, Indiana is on top with an eight and one record. One game back of a one game back of a loss column is Illinois. Michigan is next to the win yesterday, and then comes Iowa and Ohio State hoping to stay close. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Bender. Dr. Tom Davis of Iowa says that this is a must game. They've got to win today to stay in the big time title picture. He's also said you've got to beat the contenders at home in order to stay in the race. But that has not been made any easier due to the fact there is a fr front page story in the Des Moines Register today. And the title was three Iowa players get drug help. Working with me is Dick Vitale. And Dick, What's your reaction to all that? Well, Gary, as a father, certainly, and someone that loves kids, drugs absolutely destroy in society. However, the positive sign here is that the Iowa athletic program did something in a positive way. They spent over $16,000 when it was reported back in August that three athletes had a problem. They've re rehabilitated those athletes. According to the latest report, since August 5th, not one player has tested positive, and I think that's a positive sign. Illinois is going to have to have a great effort, and Kenny Battle will give him that. He is at home, above the rim, or diving on the floor. Well, I want to talk about basketball, and I love talking about Kenny Battle. He's Mr. Tenacity. He's a tremendous slam jam bammer. He's a member of the Flying Illini. But when you talk about Illinois today, they're going to need a positive performance out of their backcourt. Larry Smith's going to have to do a great job replacing Kendall Gill against the Iowa Zone Press. And Steve Bardo's going to have to be very steady. Ed Horton, the Iowa power forward, he may be playing as well as anybody in the Big Ten right now. If I had a pick right now, Gary, an all-Big Ten team, Eddie Horton would be my guy in the middle, along with Nick Anderson and Glenn Rice across the front. He's been a power player, but their backcourt has been very steady. B.J. Armstrong is a guy that thinks a little bit too much shoot rather than pass, but he's absolutely a dynamite player. Roy Marble is capable of breaking the game open, and this place will explode when Matt Bull steps on the floor and he will today we'll be back the tip off between these two teams iowa and illinois in just a moment carver hawkeye arena at iowa city the starting lineup for the fighting illini liberty will start in place of nick anderson who's having some toe and knee difficulty but will play through the course of the game bardo and smith in the backcourt hamilton the center Horton, we talked about him. Thompson, Jepson, Armstrong, and Marble. Iowa comes in here with a 16 and four record, four and three in Big Ten play. The assignments, let's see what has to happen today. Well, Illinois has got to attack that press and finalize like Indiana did. They got to go through it, but this game is over in Iowa. Then Hamilton and Battle are going to have to definitely control the boards because they definitely have to be impressed with the great rebounding of Iowa. On the other side, Iowa's got to keep Battle and Hamilton off the offensive board to get easy baskets, and Marble's got to get some layups in transition. Jim Bain will put the ball up at center circle. He's joined by Malcolm Hemphill and Ron Winter. 
Illinois in the dark uniforms, and the tip will come to the fighting lineup. This is Larry Smith, the junior, out of Alton, Illinois, picked up by B.J. Armstrong. Bardo inside the Kenny Battle. Rebound, Horton batted away and saved in by Illinois. That's Hamilton. And Gibson, the seven-footer, brings it down. Can't allow them to get those second shots, Gary. Gibson, baseline, the pass goes. Turn around by Horton is in, and Iowa's on top. The big wide body has been very effective in the lane all year long. He's one of the most improved players in the nation. Nine of the last ten games, Horton has scored over 20 points. The court's going to be wide open. You're going to have a lot of lanes to drive against Iowa with their full court pressure. Bardo kicks it off to Hamilton. Hamilton now comes off to the far side of Marcus Liberty, the sophomore. Up for the rebound, effectively, is Roy Marble, but he traveled with the basketball. I don't know about the walking call right there. We take a look at Marble, the all-time leading scorer in Iowa basketball. A lot of people have really been down on Roy, trying to make the conversion to the backcourt. Here's the jump shot. A little tentative shot right there. A little soft by Marcus Liberty. Illinois has missed their three field goal attempts thus far. Liberty coming out. He's starting in place of Nick Anderson. Inside it goes to battle. Boy, is he a tough, tenacious player. Liberty was such a great player in high school, Gary. The number one player two years ago has really struggled. Zone defense. They had a 1 2 2 zone. Larry Smith, three point attempt. And there is Horton, the leading rebounder in the Big Ten. DJ Armstrong. Rebound, Gibson. Wes Gibson hanging around the basket as we look at the doctor, Dr. Tom Davis. He's excited that he has Matt Bullard back in uniform today. See, that's what I mean about the open court. And that's what I mean about finalizing, baby. That is absolutely converting in transition. Doing the finalizing was Lowell Hamilton, but Armstrong penetrating at the other end is foul on the move to the basket. Iowa doesn't let off. They will pressure from right out of the gate, and you must attack that press, try to get easy baskets as Illinois just did. There's the penetration right there. B.J. Armstrong using the left hand. There's the foul. Marcus Liberty picking up the foul. When you talk about the great guards in America, certainly B.J.'s name is mentioned. I think he's dropped a notch a little bit this year, Gary. Sherman Douglas is playing outstanding. But Mookie Blaylock, to me, is the best two-way guard in America. And right now, the NBA scouts love George McLeod of Florida State. He will be the first guard taken in a draft, George McLeod. B.J. Armstrong with excellent numbers. The senior trio is averaging over 18 points per man as Armstrong gets the roll. He's from out of Brother Rice High School. As we look at their points per game, look at the big three. The three seniors, what a job they're going to have replacing those three. And don't forget, they were recruited by George Raveling. The Raveling factor still exists at Iowa. Armstrong, an excellent free throw shooter, shooting 85% for the year. Henson was complaining about a lane violation on that last free throw. Well, he's also complaining that they're touching the ball. See, as it comes through the net, they don't want anyone to touch the ball, even though it was touched then by Liberty, because they want to get it out quickly before the pressure sets up. Hawkeyes by four. We've played almost two minutes in the first half. They constantly change the look of their press. There's Kenny Battle. Just doesn't go. Armstrong on the move. They got to make those shots. Oh, little showtime. Baseline, turn around, and Thompson's got it. Ray Thompson, a good athlete. He has stepped in the lineup. That's the good pass, right over the top of the pressure. Thompson, the freshman. Shot now by Hamilton, Lowell Hamilton. Uncanny must score, and this tempo really up and down the floor is expected. Well, the fans have to love this. This is the kind of basketball people love, run, pressure, and score. Iowa's lead now, cut to four. Kids love playing this style, Gary, the exciting basketball. Lookinville has checked into the ball game. Wade Lookinville, number 34, freshman, out of Fort Dodge, Iowa. Horton on the move, and they're going to call a charge. He hooked him as he made his move inside. That was a good call by Jim Bain. Tom Davis doesn't like the call. He says, hey, we're at home. Now you watch Horton. Now he's going to spin in a lane. He was missed. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Without a doubt, the left arm catches Hamilton. Good call. You know what? Horton was Mr. Basketball in Illinois, and they were recruiting him, but they wanted him to be redshirted for a year, and he says, no, I want to play instantly. And he was Mr. Basketball, and Mr. Hamilton was runner-up. 
Don Davis had the call explained to him by Jim Bain. I don't think he agrees yet, but it was definitely a hook as he had that left arm around. You know, you're not supposed to talk to a coach and have conversation with the coach and a coach with the official unless the other coach is present. Well, they threw that theory out the window, didn't Yeah, it's part of the rule book. Trying to draw the charge is Armstrong. No whistle. Here's P.J. Bowman, number 10, who's checked into the ball game. He's a junior college transfer. He's a shooter. They want him on the floor to shoot the ball. Listen to the place. Matt Bullard's getting off the bench. Matt Bullard coming in. He'll be in for the first time since September 12th. On the move is Bardo. Nice jump hook. Nice spin move by Bardo. He's from out of Carbondale. And Bardo running down the floor. He and Marble were pushing against each other. There is a lot of emotion in the early going of this one. As now coming into the ball game is Brian Garner, number four, and you see Bullard, number 50. Bullard hurt his knee against Jackson State. And under up to that point. He came from out of Colorado, a transfer. A lot of people believe he's got NBA ability. He can shoot the ball from deep. He's got a heavy brace on that knee, Gary. He was a leading rebounder for Iowa before he went out with that knee injury. Added in a cast, a slight tear of the knee of the ligament. Here is Thompson on the move. And P.J. Bowman's got it for the fighting Illini. He should have centered the ball. Not the kind of shot you want to get three on one, but yet he scores. It's a two-pointer. And it's all even now at eight. Bowman is a good shooter. That's what I recruited him to help their perimeter game. There's that bounce pass that Tom Davis likes. And there's a foul on Stephen Bardo reaching in. Last year, Illinois had a problem from the perimeter and shooting free throws. So Lou Henson, as we look at Lou, he's got his Lou do in place today. He was teasing me about my Dickie do yesterday. But I'll tell you this, when you look at this club this year, they're a much improved team on a free throw line and with their perimeter shooting. They've really worked hard to improve their shooting. Well, when they lost Kendall Gill, it really hurt their ball club. They were 17-0 at that stage before he fractured the foot. Inside is Marble. Rebound by Bardo. Bardo's one of the better guard rebounders in America. Illinois with a chance now to take the lead at the 16-04 mark of this first half. I was going to play some zone, especially with Bullard on the floor. Bardo out to Bowman. He is not afraid to put it up. Three-pointer missing this time. Rebound clear by Battle. Battle seemingly is everywhere. He's got good lateral ability to rebound. A lot of guys can rebound in traffic, but he can go laterally as well. See, there's the zone. The top of the circle will be open. There's a push-off inside. The foul is going to go on Hamilton, trying to position for the ball. Hamilton is so highly acclaimed out of high school. He's been an up-and-down player. Remember my Dow Jones team throughout his career. However, this year, he's been a much more consistent player. It's all even at eight. 15-34, left to go in this first half of play. The Hawkeyes are. Davis 10-0 this year. And they have six games at home in February, only two on the road. Well, five of their first six in the conference were on the road. He was like Marco Polo playing all those road games. Tom Davis. Very favorable schedule. On the other hand, Illinois finishes with a brutal, very tough three-game road swing. Two of them on the road and one at home. Well, they have Michigan on the road. They have a game with Indiana on the road. And then they have Iowa sandwiched in between. So that's going to be tough for Illinois. There's Lookin' Bill, who was Mr. Basketball in Iowa. Gets it to Garner. Off to B.J. Armstrong. Here's Garner extremely quick. He was redshirted. He's out of the Milwaukee area. That's a bounce pass. So characteristic of Iowa. As Horton spin move. And Bardo doing a good job on the defensive boards. Bardo, as I said earlier, Gary's a tremendous rebounder for a guard. He's missed the versatility. Here comes the active zone. They're going to really make this club have to shoot the perimeter shot. They're going to jam inside. He's got to make that. Bardo did. Three-pointer. Nick Anderson, by the way, has checked in after the timeout. Anderson playing now for the Fighting Illini. Over the last 10 days, he's been very rarely at practice. He's had all kinds of injuries. Plus, his mom was in a serious automobile crash. He's right now in the hospital. 11-8 the score in favor of the Fighting Illini. Looking Bill bounce passes off to Armstrong. This is Moses who's now in the ball game. James Moses, a freshman out of California. He's a good shooter. Moses can shoot the ball. Rebound cleared by Horton. You can see why he leads the Big Ten. He's a big, strong, tough competitor. He has improved so much more this year. There's the pressure. And in the backcourt, a foul will go on Moses. 
Gary, let me point out, against the kind of pressure that Iowa utilizes, there are three things you must do against that trap. One, you must have a reverse man to reverse the basketball. If they shut him down, you must have a guy post up, and it's mandatory against that kind of pressure to use the diagonal pass. Irvin Small now has checked in for Illinois, number 24. He'll come in relief of Hamilton. They'll share that center position. On the move is Battle. Nice left-handed shot off the glass. Dr. Tom Davis's wife is up, and she's signaling. That's a walking violation, Mr. Bain. I didn't see the walk. Didn't lift the pivot foot. Thompson into Horton. Horton has it stripped, and we're going to have all ball, a hell ball. And it's going to go to Iowa. The alternating possession. The Hawkeyes will get it. We take a look, the ball goes down inside, they converge. Four people surround them. It looked like they had the ball there. Well, the officials thought they did. That's yeah. all that counts. I think so far they've done a good job. And you know, I've been tough on the officials in a big town. There's Horton. They can't handle the big horse. He told me today, he said, And uh -oh. we have Irvin Small uh -oh. shaken up. He goes down, and Illinois has had so many injuries. Gill and Anderson, and now Small, who goes down, and he's in pain. Irvin Small, a junior out of Simeon High School in Chicago, being attended to right now. I'm sure that Lou Henson must have a nightmare of this when Gill went down, remembering his game against Georgia Tech with about 30 seconds to go, fractured the foot. Anderson had an injury against Indiana, and now you have Small going down. We take a look right here, trying to post up inside. There's the big horse. He gets great post position. Excellent entry to the box. He trips over his own teammate. <laughs> trips over Bardo as Horton scores inside. Well, they've got him on the side now. They'll look him over. They use him on a floor basically small. They give him some aggressive play. He's a role player, the consummate role player. Lowell Hamilton will come back in to replace Small. Take a look at this pressure right now as we look at Lou Henson. He knows it's going to be tough to get a W out here. They've had six trips here, one only one time at Carver Hawkeye Arena, and there's Bowman having some difficulty. B.J., they list him at 5'10". He played on the NJC AA runner-up last year, which was Parkland College out of Champaign, Illinois. Bardo, nice head and shoulder fake. And Lowell Hamilton. Matt Fuller brings it down. 6'10 out of West Des Moines. He's really worried about his conditioning today. He told me the biggest thing he's concerned about is a fatigue factor, Fuller. Ray Thompson on the move. And Jim Bain has called him for the charging foul. Thompson charging in to Pardo, commits a foul. Thompson is going to be an exciting player in the Iowa uniform. Right now, he's like option four in their offensive scheme of things. Take a look at him right here. He's got great legs, no doubt about the call. He runs him down, the defensive player is stationary. But next year, when he moves up to the option one or two, he's going to put big numbers on the board. He's from Ar Argo, Illinois. Out of Summit, Illinois, where Argo High School is. He was a top 25 prospect a year ago out of high school. 13-12, Illinois. He was one of the top three high school players in the state. Three-pointer, and that's what Bowman does so well. That's why they recruited him. He's almost a designated specialist, a perimeter shooter. He has five points in the ball game. DJ will bring it back out, reload it. Off it comes to Horton. Horton backing in against Battle. And Bullard tried to follow, and they're going to call a foul on Bullard. Well, you know, the foul was on Bullard, but if I were Dr. Tom Davis, I'd be happy in a way because he shows that he's very active and he's not favoring the knee. Take a look at the big fella from on a transfer from Colorado. See, right over the top, number 50, but at least it shows he's active and not tentative. That's exactly right. That was the big story yesterday when he came out and practiced. If he would not be tentative, they would play him. See the guy posted up, then the diagonal pass, just like the clinic 101 says, attacking the pressure. Foul inside. Boy, Horton made that a tough shot for Bowman. He jumped out at him and made him change his shot. What I was doing in the press, Gary, they're rotating up, taking away the reverse pass to the man throwing the ball in bounds. So what you must do there is they are now susceptible to the post-up pass and then the diagonal pass, and then you have to move it up the court and convert. And coming in is Marcus Liberty. He started the ball game. Hamilton will sit down. I shake my head as I watch Lowell sit down. Little coaching going on now by Lou Henson. Come on, Lowell, look at him when he talks to you. They get him out of there. He's committed his second foul at the 12-43 mark of the first half. I love to tease the kids when I go to the sideline. They never like to have that eye contact with the coach. This is a good move. Pressure a team that likes to press. Come back and let them think about a little pressure. Roy Marble's been very quiet, hasn't he? 
from doing a good job keeping the ball away from him. Horton, back door, has the guy. He ignited it there. Great back screen created the opportunity. First two points for Marble. He heard you, Gary. Yes, he did. Stripped away that time. Good defense by P.J. Armstrong and back to Liberty. Oh. You talk about some athletes. Here is Nick Anderson, a little out of control right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, oh. flight number 33, the fly in Alina, Kenny Battle. Four-point lead now for the fly in Alina. It is frantic out there right now. Horton, who did he throw that one to? Hey, I think we're right now over the Rucker League in New York City. Run, baby, run. But you know what? The fans love this style of play. They really love the great athleticism. athleticism? Is That's that the it. Word? You Help got it. Out. Well, some of that sandlot ball out of the Chicago area starting to surface here. Not exactly what Henson and Davis had in mind. Take this a look at that. Battle, though, did he put this one away with a note of finality? Flight number 33. Digital action. Louisville heads west to face UCLA, or Purdue meets Bobby Knight's Indiana Hoosiers on ABC's College Basketball next Sunday. Gary, watch the rear screen. Going to be set right up in this area, and it's going to free Horton to throw the ball over the top for Marble cutting for the layup. Take a look right now. There's Lookendell. See how he lays the rear screen? Thank you. Mr. Bartle says nobody communicated. And there goes Marble. But you know what? Marble gets the deuce, but it was created by the screen by Lookendell. The toughest screen to defend. The rear screen. And that might get Marble started. His first two points of the game. Four-point lead now for the Illini. 11.43 to go in the first half. Bowman along with Bardo on the backcourt. Anderson's in there along with Battle and Marcus Liberty. Liberty in the pivot now. Notice how to play the 1-2-2 zone press. I mean, half-court zone now with the point guy, Moses, and then he'll sink inside. See, he comes up on top on the ball. Now watch him, 24 on the ball. Then he sinks inside. See how he sinks down? See how he sinks down? Now give me that shot right there. you got to knock it down. Three-pointer. Nick Anderson playing so well. He's been battling the toe and the knee problems. But playing as well as uh, he's capable of playing with those physical ailments. As Lou Henson said, he's the best 6-6 rebounder he's ever coached. He's an NBA player. He'll be an outstanding small forward. Look at Bill, the freshman who they wanted to redshirt. Instead, have been forced to play due to the injury to Bullard this year. There's Moses. Off to Marble. Iowa likes to use the bounce pass to the wing. Three-point attempt by Moses. There's Horton again. Boy, is he playing inspired basketball? And he is fouled. The foul is going to go on Marcus Liberty. Eddie Horton is so fired up today. He came out of Lanphier High School in Springfield, Illinois. He was Mr. Basketball over Melvin McCants and over Lowell Hamilton. And he told me today he really gets charged up for Illinois. He, he, was, a good a, rebound. he was a center in previous years, now playing that power forward. And he's at home there, Dick. He's done a solid job. My all Big Ten team, and I don't want the people in Iowa to get mad at me. If I had a select today in the backcourt, I go with Jay Burson, St. John's Arena. You talk about a place that jumps down to Columbus, Ohio. Gary Williams got that place going bananas. I'd go with Burson. I'd go with Jay Edwards, having a great year for Bobby Knight. The Hoosiers came back yesterday and won. Glenn Rice, Horton, and Nick Anderson. My MVP right now in the league, I'd probably give the slight edge to Glenn Rice over Burson, but really close. Boy, I had Burson a week ago today. He was sensational. 29 points against Louisville. And there is Horton giving the Illinois lead now only a five-point advantage. See, there's the reverse pass against the trap. Here is Battle. Battle brings it outside to Bowman. He'll load it up. They're really knocking the perimeter shot down, Gary, and that's what it recruited Bowman. Matt Bullard, bounce pass off to Thompson. Eight points in the game now for P.J. Bowman. Bullard's an excellent passer for a big player, and he can shoot the ball from deep. Nice pass, pass for Bullard, and the foul. Horton is fouled by Bardo. That's what we watched Bullard do in practice yesterday. He is a very good baseline passer. Oh, he's an excellent passer. He really knows how to utilize the bounce pass. See, they use their big man as a reverse man. He steps up, and there's the great entry. What a tremendous bounce pass. That's not as easy to make as some people would believe. 16 fouls now against Illinois as Bardo commits his second of the game. If Iowa is healthy and has all their people, if Bullard gets himself ready, this club can be really difficult when there's the battle for Seattle when it's the NCAA postseason time. 
Horton is not a good free throw shooter, shooting 56 plus for the year. That's the same, almost identical to what he's shooting from the field. 24, 17, 10, 12 to go in the first half. The Illini with the lead. Illinois in the lead because they're doing a great job attacking this zone, and you look a lot better when you're shooting that open shot and knocking it down. See on a perimeter getting a lot of open shots. Turnaround jumper by Small who came back after that knee problem. He's got his knee wrapped and seemingly okay. Garner on the move. Off to Armstrong. DJ moves over to the second guard slot. With and Illini have thrown the ball away. It'll be Iowa's basketball. With Brian Garner on the floor and his great quickness. Listen to this place. Carvel Hawkeye Arena. What kind of a pro guard do you think B.J. Armstrong is? I think he's a lead guard. He has great ability to score as well as to penetrate. He's not a pure point guard. He'll go in about the middle or the late first round in the NBA draft, Gary. As I said earlier, the first big guard that'll be taken will be George McLeod over at Florida State. Larry Smith comes back in now to the Illinois lineup at the 942 mark. 24-19 in favor of Illinois. See, Garner's playing the point right now, and Armstrong's playing the scoring guard slot. Bullard looking inside again. Oh, they use that bounce pass better than any team in America. Marble. Great jumping jack from out of Flint, Michigan. There's it, the pressure. It's a three-point game. Marble with four points. And in the backcourt, we're going to have a foul. Thompson coming up and uh, fouling Larry Smith. Dr. Tom Davis fell in love with the pressure defense when he went as a high school coach to watch a John Wooden team play. Boy, now he has Gary Williams, one of his assistants in the league. You have Tom Davis. You have Lou Henson. They play all 94 feet. Look at Marble sitting down. Great post position, and it's the bounce pass that made that happen, and the great legs of Marble to score. There's Ray Thompson now playing a point in that zone. So now with 9-0-9, down by three, Iowa in possession of the ball and substitutions. Lookinville comes back into the ball game. What a lead the Big Ten has become, Gary. Everywhere you go to play, you have to come to play. The road is unbelievable. Just ask anybody about going up to Clem Haskins up in Minnesota. And really, a lot of people criticize this crowd. They say it's not as vocal, not as demonstrative as some of the other crowds in the Big Ten. I don't know about that today. Well, the students are way up high. They're upset. They want to be down on a court. Very comfortable place. Great place to view a basketball game. Inside intended for Marvel. Looking Bill's able to save it. They continue to utilize the bounce pass. And Tom Davis is telling me in 1939, Everett Dean and a book had the bounce pass. And there's a foul on Small. And they're in the one and one. That's the seventh team foul now against Illinois. Illinois with Kendall Gill had it all together. They were a beautiful Rolls Royce with all the parts just absolutely superb as we look at Lou Henson. But when you take one of those parts out of that lineup, you have to be effective. Jepson comes back in, the seven-footer for the Hawkeyes. Armstrong at the line. Jepson is a role player, hang around the basket, pass the basketball, doesn't really block shots. They think Bullard will give him a little bit of that dimension, blocking the shot. Tom Davis thinks so. He'll be a terrific center before his career is over at Iowa. As Armstrong knocks it down, it's a two-point game. Well, they do a great job of teaching here. They break down the game. I was watching them yesterday in practice. Big man moves and really work hard at all the parts of making yourself a player. Armstrong thus far three of three from the line. Small brings it down. So Small looked like a very serious injury. He's been able to continue in this basketball game. Iowa constantly wants you to play at a fast pace. That's what I like to trap. They want you to shoot the ball quickly. Liberty ducking inside. Small tried to keep it alive. It's off of Small. Iowa's basketball. Boy, I tell you, they're not getting easy shots off the press like they'd like to have. Well, Iowa got back quickly and shut that down. Liberty's thinking a little bit offense. I just can't believe he's the same kid I watched play when I saw him in high school in those All-American games. I tell you, though, that Prop 48 situation really slows you. Eli Brewster, Trey Lee of Ohio State have had problems with it. Well, Rebound, looking, Bill. They're coming back now. Both are making contributions. Three-pointer by Armstrong. See, BJ can shoot the basketball. Iowa with the lead, and this crowd now with Thompson. Time out, get a time out, Lou Henson. Get a T.O., Lou. Get a T.O., Lou. He better get a time out. And so Iowa has pulled it. 
to a 27 to 24 lead. There's Ray Thompson with the long arms. They believe he'll be the best pressure defensive player they've ever had. He's got long, long arms and great quickness. They're rocking here in Harbor Hawkeye Arena. Well, Matt Bullard, we talked about the injury he sustained on December 12th against Jackson State. He went down returning for the first time today and certainly has been very helpful. Let's go now to Cheryl Miller. Thank you, Gary. With me is Matt Bullard's father, Chuck. And Chuck, was uh, Matt very excited about today's game? Yes, he was. He really was. He's been out for eight weeks, and so he's really looking forward to playing today. Was he nervous at all about the condition of his knee? No, I don't think so. He's gone through a long rehabilitation, and so his knee is back to normal. So I think he's got a lot of confidence in it. What would he like to get out of today's game? I think he's just happy to be back playing in a big game on national TV. All right. Enjoy the rest of the game, Chuck. Back to you, Gary. Thank you, Cheryl. They change the look of their press. They go to what I call a matchup pressure. They play like a man-to-man -man out of it, and then scramble and trap. Battle brings it back out now to Pardo. Dr. Tom Davis is constantly changing the look of his pressure so that you don't get into a rhythm in attacking it. 7.40 to go on the first half. Notice Thompson at the point. Three-pointer by Pardo. And the big six-foot-eight senior out of Springfield, Illinois, has a rebound. Thompson created that shot by Bardo going off because of his long arms and his stretch at the top of that zone. Won't go for Marbles. Bardo's like a Michael Jordan. The oh, first. what a collision here as Armstrong collided with Larry Smith. What a collision that was. If Ooh. Illinois is going to be he successful. He wasn't established, so it'll be a foul on Armstrong. If Illinois is going to be successful right here, this guy, Larry Smith, has got to make a positive contribution. Uh, he was not in position. He definitely steps up. Good call. It's a block. Boy, Armstrong really took a pounding on that one. He's a tough kid. He's out of the Detroit area. 16 foul now against the Iowa Hawkeyes. There's that zone. See right up top? There's Ray Thompson. He's out there to bother the long-range shooters. Long arms, number 32. Watch him, number 32. See the long arms? Now sink inside. Rebound by Small. Bullard tries to impede him, but he gets it anyway. Prior to his injury, Bullard would have had that rebound because of the fact that he's not quick to the basketball right now. Small was able to make the conversion off the offensive rebound. That is their first, second chance point that time. I was got 10. He can shoot it. Yes, sir. He's got great touch. He's got a velvet touch. He led Colorado in scoring last year, averaging over 16 points a game. Four-point lead for Iowa. Armstrong trying to chase it down and save beautifully in the far corner that time by Nick Anderson. Bardo, three-pointer. See, right now, Iowa's got them playing their way. They got them out of their rhythm offensively, shooting the ball quickly. That's a walking violation. Thompson not under control that time. Travels with the basketball. What an erratic pace. That, oh. That's the exact concept of the zone trap create the fast pace well Hold next week some of you will be seeing louisville against ucla purdue against indiana gene katie and bob nightstein what a matchup those two guys want to start a rumor gene katie maybe arizona state john mcleod arizona state is that a rumor or are you just guessing i know that mr katie would be very interested in going to arizona state he'll totally deny it and so will john mcleod that's a great job i think that's a sleeping job gary i want that job to go down here in the sun get it for me you're from arizona well, yeah you make too much money they can't afford uh, you you and craig channel for a great director can help me out you both live in phoenix not enough room for you in that town bardo inside now to battle battle kicks it out to bowman four point lead for the hawkeyes Liberty. Uh, there's a follow by Liberty, but he is guilty of the foul. He is really tentative, isn't he? He's not yeah. playing with any confidence at all. Marcus is such a multi-talented athlete. He's great in the open court. He can pass the basketball. Now look at him. He's shooting. He's hesitating. He's not shooting with any confidence. He squares right there. He's already coming in. He's anticipating the miss. Good offensive rebound, but he makes contact prior to getting the rebound. And that is his third foul, Marcus Liberty. A high school player of the year in 1987, a Prop 48 guy who's still trying to get it all together. It's been a real battle for him. 
to work through all the many, many adjustments. Forget about Prop 48, Prop 42. I'm tired of those terms. I'll tell you right now, Gary, my feeling, just declare all freshmen ineligible. Let them have four years of eligibility, get acclimated to college life, and you eliminate all the problems. Let the kids learn a little bit about what college is all about, academically, socially, and every other way, and go back to the old rule of having a freshman team. Horton, the only part of his game that's not good is free throw shooting, and he's struggling there. See, now look at this, a 2-2 press. Now they come back, they'll rotate into the zone. Liberty, left-hand shot, followed by Small, and here comes Horton. Marcus can't catch a break. Reach in by Liberty, though, doubling back on defense to keep that drive from the baseline materializing. Three-point attempt that time by Moses, and look at Horton hustle on the board. As Liberty with the rebound, put it down. Marcus Liberty is going to be a solid player in the Illinois program. He just needs one of those big games to gain some confidence. He played last game, didn't score, but he had some flu difficulty. But today, with three fouls and struggling. There's a look at that zone. The 1-2-2 one, two, two set. James Moses now sinks inside, comes out on top. Now watch him at the point, 24. See, now he'll sink inside. Three-pointer by Bowman. Rebound by Small. That's one of the great assets of this club. Great legs, good offensive rebounding team. He may have overpassed the ball there. I think he had a shot. No, I think right there what happened, they got the offensive foul, the principle of verticality. You cannot come back into the plane of the defensive player. Now watch Small now coming across the baseline. Oh, there's the contact first. Now watch, he comes back into the defensive player. See that? That's called the principle of verticality. It's a pretty big word. Hey, I'm not bad. I used three syllables. I can't <laughs> believe it. That's the second foul on Small, but I really thought Battle had a better shot because when he got the ball inside Small, he had a bad angle on the basket. They've kept him under control. They've really contained the Battle. 31-26 Iowa, 4.40 to go in the first half. That bounce path does not find the mark. It's going to be off of Illinois. The Nick one, Anderson pleading his cause. The one trademark I like about Illinois, they've shown a lot of character this year coming from behind. They were down 18 versus Missouri, down 16 against a good Bobby Kremens Georgia Tech team, and they were down 10 against Indiana and won all three games. Remember this, though, Iowa's 16-1 and one when they lead at halftime. Boy, is Marvel showing you something there. And then look at the play he made there. Yep. He defaults just comes up with it. Garner. Beautiful pass to Marble, rejected by Battle. Check that, Anderson. Give it up, give it up, the bounce pass, yes. Perfect execution, two on one. Take the ball to the lane, make the bounce pass, a four-point turnaround. Yes, sir, that is exactly what ended up happening, and now Anderson comes up with it. After blocking the last one, comes up with a steal, can't handle it as Battle. They're really not finalizing in transition. Henson is looking at him saying, come on, calm down, calm down. Be a little bit more patient offensively. Armstrong comes back in. Horton comes back in. As checking out will be Garner and Jepson at the 401 mark of the first half. You know, Lou Henson's got over 500 wins, 522 to be exact, but really struggled that postseason time. Lost last year to Villanova with a 10-point lead. Lost the year before the Boston oh, team. Made me stand on my head. That's right. That was probably the highlight of the year. <laughs> He's teasing me, hit me with elbows here. <laughs> Look at the screen by Bullard. Now reverse the ball to Bullard. He's wide open. Here reverse is, it. Here is Horton trying to get it inside, and he's going to take it inside, and he's fouled as he made the move to the basket. They had Matt Bullard wide open. If they would have just reversed the basketball, swung it from side to side, he was open for the good jump shot. Small committing the foul. We're going to watch Small reach in right now. As soon as you stick that hand in there, there it is. See the hand? There we go. Illinois is not very deep, and they have Liberty with three fouls, and now Small has three fouls. Illinois lost another good kid, a good offensive player by the name of Andy Kopp, and he had a blood clot. They were counting on him for some good perimeter shooting. In fact, Lou Henson told me, he said, Dick, he's probably our best one-on-one -on -one player. Kopp an excellent offensive player. We wish him a speedy recovery. Well, he has to have surgery this summer on that blood clot. He's a beautiful kid, too. You know, we mentioned earlier Nick Anderson's mom's over in Holy Cross Hospital. We want to wish Alberta a speedy recovery. She was in a very serious auto accident. Horton gets about one of two every time, and that's right on his seasonal average of 57% from the line. Not bad, though, the rebounds and the points he's piled up in this first half, and Bowman, three-point play. He's doing exactly what they recruited him for, shoot the open stationary jump shot, something they didn't have in their arsenal last season. Bowman now with 11 points in the ball game. Ooh, what a screen Bullard laid. That was an illegal screen. 
That was an illegal screen, and they nailed him for it. See, when you lay a screen, Gary, there are two kinds of screens. There's the front screen and the back screen. When you lay a front screen, you can get as close to the defensive player as possible as long as he's in your vision. Now, take a look right here. You've got to be stationary when you lay this. That's a back screen. You've got to allow him one normal step. He only steps into a good call by the official. They have to do that more often. They do not call that enough in a Big Ten. In fact, you were making a... This is Illinois' first free throw of the game. 3.14 left in the first half. See, on a front screen, Gary, you can get as close to the athlete as possible. On a back screen, you must give the defensive player one step to react, one normal step. P.J. Bowman last year averaged 23 and a half points for Parkland College in Champaign. He was fourth in the NJCAA in three-point plays, as now Bardo will lead the ball game, and Larry Smith checks in. That's the first free throw just a moment ago. Yeah, that's unbelievable. One for one. They're not getting the ball inside. They've become a perimeter team because of the way that defense is sinking that zone. Horton aggressively brings it down. Two-point lead for the Hawkeyes. See, Fuller, right three-pointer. You can't let him shoot the ball. The scouting report has to say that he's an outstanding long-range shooter, and that's what separates him from a lot of big people, the ability to shoot the ball and pass the ball. 6'10", and able to hit one from that range. Broken up beautifully by Armstrong. Thompson now gets it off to Marble. Marble backing in, and he throws that one with too much on it. Iowa can't control it. You know, he's out of Flint, Michigan. They produce so many great players. Glenn Rice is from out of Flint. Another tremendous player. I'll tell you something, I'm in love with Glenn Rice as a player. 37-32, we have a timeout. to show you a sequence to show you what kind of a basketball game we have here unfolding in Iowa City. We have some great athletes. Now you tell me this is not an athletic move. You tell me if that's not a Michael Jordan, a mini version of Jordan. Look at Marble. High wire rack. Now watch the deflection. Now watch this block shot. It's unbelievable talent in here. Just great high school athletes now playing on a collegiate level. Take a look right here. Boom. Anderson says, get it out of here. Now watch them convert. Two on one. Pull up. Give the bounce pass off, Kenny. That's it. And Bardo gets the easy layup with the 45-degree angle cut. And that's been the tempo we've had throughout the course of this game. 37-32, Iowa with the lead. Remember now, when Iowa leads at halftime, they are 16-1 and this year. Better than that, when they play at home, they're Zippo. They don't lose coming <laughs> here. Bardo gets it off to Anderson. Boy, can he go up at 6'6"? What a smooth athlete. He's just a tremendous talent. Look. Now Bowman holding and trying to get around the Iowa player. Commits the personal foul. P.J. Bowman. You know who made that call? Not Lou Henson. Dr. Tom Davis's wife. I'm getting a kick out of her emotion sitting to my right. She really gets into the game. Look at Lou, as calm as can be. There's the good look at the doctor. Successful at Lafayette, then Boston College, and at Iowa. He's done a great job in postseason time at Iowa. Almost got to the Final Four two years ago. Lost that heartbreaker to the running rebels of UNLV. You know what's amazing about Davis? He's never had Iowa not ranked in the top 20 since he's been here. He's been left four wins the first two years. He's been left some great players. I mean, George Raveling left this place full when he came here. He had some great talent to work with, and you're looking at three of them today. When you look at Armstrong, and you look at Dick, you look at uh, Mr. Horton, and also Mr. Uh, Marble. The trio, as they call him, all averaging over 18 points a game. Armstrong makes it a 39-34 lead for the Hawkeyes. Here comes the pressure. Now they try to trap it. See, they throw it right over the top of the press. Anderson down again. That looks like the previous shot, but doesn't go this time. They need Anderson on the floor because he has the ability to convert. Something Jay Edwards did the other night for Indiana. Marble's a good move, but he can't finish it off. You can't retreat against the pressure. You've got to be able to score. Take it right through the pressure. Anderson. Anderson That's what he now can do. giving the Lion Eye a lift. Oh, he's a solid player. I've always been a big fan of Anderson. He's from out of Simeon High School. There's a war going on behind the scenes between Illinois and Iowa for a kid by the name of Deion Thomas, 6'9", from Simeon High School. The steal by uh -oh. Watch uh -oh. this one. Watch Dutch this City. One. Good night. Oh, a little showboat. They would have really rocked in champagne when he delivered that reverse. And we have a one-point game. 
I'll tell you, anybody that's watching, you better call your friends, tell them to watch. This is real exciting college basketball. What is it they say? They play 94 feet, 40 minutes, full steam, and that's exactly what's happening here. Well, the Big Ten, you mentioned next week, Indiana and Purdue, Katie and Knight. Thompson, he's in a lot oh, of trouble, but he move. got out of it. That's Dr. Tom Davis's wife. She's really into the game. 41-38 in favor of the Hawkeyes. Smith, oh, nice pass to Hamilton. He missed the stop. Oh! He missed it. Watch a four-point turnaround if they score. Marble, that's a four-point turnaround. <laughs> what a great game. Five points, Iowa up on top, but exciting athletes. Run, jump, and press. Boy, there's very little oxygen left in this place right now. Here's Bowman from three. And Battle and Horton go up, and Horton has committed the foul. No, they're going to give it. It's, it's going to be Battle with the foul. Both of them went up, and they were talking to each other as they ended up with that very far corner of the field, up the floor. Kenny Battle, everybody loves his heart, his character. He's such a tenacious player. If you have to find one guy in America, he would be my nomination for Mr. Tenacity. That's the first foul on Battle. Horton is 5 of 8 from the line. But look at the numbers. 11 points, 9 rebounds. He's averaging 10 and a half a game. He leads the Big Ten, so he's well on his pace there, and he's averaging just a little over 18 and a half points a game. What well, added help they get from Matt Bullard, his size, his rebounding ability, his presence will free up other people for good shots, Gary. Ed Horton, as you mentioned, Mr. Basketball in Illinois, coming out of Springfield. He's one for two. One for two takes him to the Hall of Fame in baseball. <laughs> but it doesn't take anywhere shooting free throws in basketball except for the loser's locker room and ask Syracuse with their four losses. It's always been shooting about 55, 58% in those four losses. Here's the one, two, two zone. They're gonna, they're gonna shot foul. clock is off because they'll be taking the last shot of the first half. And Horton racing the clock with they four shot seconds. Too soon. Shot too soon. Yep, but it's a follow inside, and they hurried the shot. They had enough time to execute it. They shot the ball a little too soon. Illinois gave a great opportunity for Iowa to convert, and that would have been a big basket. 44-38, and I'm telling you something. There's been some exciting athletic plays in this game. Iowa leads by six. We've come to the halfway point here in Iowa City. ABC's College Basketball. Now the biggest difference in the ball game is at the free throw line. Well, you know, Iowa, as we look at the free throws, everything else basically even. Iowa going to the line on a regular basis, 11 for 16 versus 1 for 2. The reason for that, Gary, Iowa's averaging about 30 attempts a game versus about 20 for Illinois. Illinois really down in a number of times there to the free throw line, and that's because in the open court, playing that full court pressure, you're not pounding the ball inside in a half court game. We look at Illinois, look at Bowman. Everybody's saying, who's Bowman? He gets 12 points shooting the three-point shot against the zone defense of Iowa. And on the other side, we look at Horton with 12, Armstrong with 10. I thought Horton had an outstanding first half. Well, Bullard, you see him with six points. He was two of two from three-point range, and what an asset he could be to Iowa. Well, psychologically, he's a big lift today, but he can also shoot the ball. He has the great skills, the size. He can pass the ball, shoot the ball. He runs real well, and he's an outstanding rebounder. He was leading them and rebounding before he was injured. Marble now, had eight points in the first half. Boy, he had a couple of great athletic moves. Well, he's been critiqued so much by so many people, been criticized a great deal for inconsistent play because of expectations. Came out of high school so highly acclaimed, but I think he's had a solid career. He leads Iowa in scoring, all-time leading scorer. You talk about solid. Look at Ed Horton in the first half. He had 11, 11 rebounds. rebounds. That's above his average. We mentioned he leads the Big Ten in that category. The only thing that really didn't go well for him, he was 6 of 10 from the free throw line. 
Again, remember this, Iowa's lost only one time this year when they have led at halftime. Well, you know, if I was healthy, I really believe they'd be right now probably number one in the nation if they had Bullard. Who right is now. number one in the nation? Well, now. there isn't anybody. 1A, I'd give it to Georgetown. 1B, Missouri. 1C, Arizona. 1D, Louisville. But you know what? Missouri's got a bigger battle than worrying about Oklahoma this week. Norm Stewart's going to have a battle with the NCAA on alleged recruiting violations. Stay tuned for that big soap opera up in Missouri. Okay, let's get to this game now. Bowman, who had that brilliant first half with 12 points, will start the second half as Bardo, Anderson, Lowell Hamilton, and also starting his battle. So Liberty, who opened the ball game, is not in as we start this half. See, battle should be able to sink into that yellow area and get free right in that e yellow area. Hamilton, quick turnaround move. He was not existent in the first half. He's got good hands. He can shoot the ball really well. Hamilton in the first half had four points, two of five from the field, and it's a four-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Hamilton's not really a good passer, but once he catches it inside, he can score. Looking, Bill, the start of the second half. That's he, number 34. See Hamilton playing off court, and look, he's not even a guard. He said, go ahead, Eddie, you want to stay out there? We'll let you shoot all day. They'd love to see the big horse there, but he'll go back inside. Puts one up. That's not going to find the mark, and looking, Bill's got it. He's an aggressive player, looking, Bill. That's why he's on the floor. Three-point range. And here's the steal. Seven-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Stripped, but a foul will go on Bowman. They are so explosive, especially at home. What a classy kid B.J. Armstrong is. Comes from a great family. I happen to know his dad. Well, his dad is Benjamin Sr. He is Benjamin Jr. And they talk about B.J. and the influence that his father had on him. He used to go one and one with him in that backcourt in the backyard. And uh, that made this guy one of the outstanding point guards in the country. He went to a great high school. I say that all the time when I talk about B.J. Armstrong. Brother Rice High School in Birmingham, Michigan. There's Horton. 14 points for Ed Horton. Too easy. They got that basket too easy. Illinois not scrapping in that sequence. Armstrong, a reach-in fouls. He tried to bat the ball away from Bowman. That is his second personal foul. Nine-point lead for the Hawkeyes, who led by six at isn't, the halfway point. Isn't it amazing? You look at the two teams here who potentially are number one basketball teams, but there's nobody that wants to be number one. Oklahoma gets beat by Leonard Hamilton's Oklahoma State team yesterday. I think you can make a real cause for Arizona being number one right now. You can make a cause for about five teams. There is Anderson's spin move. I'll Anderson doesn't seem to be slowed by that bad knee or toe, does it? No, he's got great quickness. The fact is that he has not practiced for the last 10 days. He's only had about three hours of a workout. Thompson missing, and look at the ability to go up. Anderson at 6'6", can sky. He's going to be an outstanding small forward in the NBA. You got him on your All-Big Ten team, right? Here he moves on the baseline. Battle tries to keep it alive. Bardo will put it up. And this time... Coming out of there is the Big Ten's leading rebounder. Hayden Fry can use that big wide body. And a nice move at the other end, but Thompson hits the floor hard after the missed shot. And also down momentarily is Bowman. Thompson's got great athletic ability. We use that term so often. What we mean by athletic ability, we're talking about quickness, lateral quickness, jumping ability, the ability to hang in the air. There's a look. That's athletic ability. When he came out of high school, Gary, there were three great high school players. As you look at the pass by Armstrong from out of Illinois, Mr. Basketball, Eric Anderson at Indiana, doing a fantastic job with the Hoosiers, LaFonso Ellis with Notre Dame, and this guy right here. Bowman has picked up his third foul. Now, Henson's got to be concerned because he's got Bowman, Liberty, and Small all with three fouls each. And he doesn't have a deep bench at all. Not at all. Henson really hot. He wants the officials to come over and visit with him, and they're not going to pay any attention to him as Moses will get ready to come into the Iowa lineup. Well, if they go over to talk to him, they have to bring Dr. Tom Davis there as well. They didn't do that in the first half. Look at Davis here. What a career record at Iowa. Unbelievable and leading at halftime. There it is. Look at those numbers. Incredible. But at home, he's awesome. At home, they have not lost here this year. Remember, you Hoosiers, you got to come here. Michigan's coming here Thursday. Well, I think the big story right now is whether Ray Thompson can shoot the free throw. They're looking at his left hand. Jim Bain is over there, and they're going to substitute Moses. And he's a good shooter. He's an excellent shooter. Moses coming off the bench. It's his left hand. Remember, he's a right-handed shooter. But for all you kids out there, if you're righty, the left hand is your guide hand, and it is important to a shooter. 
You know, Moses, though, from the free throw line is only 53%. That shocks me because his expertise is shooting the basketball. And if you watch him in practice, he's got great release, follow through. It has to be concentration. So he'll have a pair of shots coming, and he doesn't get the first one. It has to be a concentration factor. Also coming off the bench. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Come on, Gary, help the kid out. <laughs> Yeah, there's what I was talking about, and uh, it's shot selection as far as his field goal percentage being down. Oh, my dear. Nice job by Bullard, but he's stripped from behind. Anderson on the move. Oh, what a smooth move by Nick Anderson. Is he a great open court player? You can see why Henson said he's never coached anybody at 6'6". that can rebound and get up like he does. He's Mr. Clutch also. 49-44 in favor of the Hawkeyes. Notice how they use Matt Bullard as a passer out on the perimeter. Boy, the crowd really quiet right now. It's Anderson with another steal. He's single-handedly bringing the Illini back. It's a beautiful arena, but it's not one of your loud places like the St. John Arena down in... ...shooting the basketball, and if you watch him in practice, he's got great release, follow-through. It has to be concentration. So he'll have a pair of shots coming, and he doesn't get the first one. It has to be a concentration factor. Also coming off the bench. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt. Come on, Gary, help the kid out. <laughs> yeah, there's what I was talking about, and uh, it's shot selection as far as his field goal percentage being down. Oh, my dear. Nice job by Bullard, but he's stripped from behind. Anderson on the move. Oh, what a smooth move by Nick Anderson. Is he a great open court player? You can see why Henson said he's never coached anybody at 6'6 that can rebound and get up like he does. He's Mr. Clutch also. 49-44 in favor of the Hawkeyes. Notice how they use Matt Bullard as a passer out on the perimeter. Boy, the crowd really quiet right now. It's Anderson with another steal. He's single-handedly bringing the Illini back. It's a beautiful arena, but it's not one of your loud places like the St. John Arena down in Ohio State or Mackey Arena down at Purdue. Gary Williams moves some of the students in a very good position at St. John Arena to help that. I think that's beautiful. I think the place belongs to the kids, and the kids should be able to sit around courtside. But I know they want to make that money and send those checks in by putting the alumni up front. Bowman from the corner, three-pointer. That's why he's on the floor. That's, the, that's his asset, shooting the basketball. He's got 15 points. And it's a two-point lead for Iowa. They led by six, it bumped it up to nine, and now find themselves up by two. Remember we talked about Illinois coming back on a number of occasions this year, 18 down to Missouri, 16 to Georgia Tech, 10 to Indiana. Bullard, two for two at that three-point range in that first half. Keeping Horton outside, and Horton spin move. Bullard, Bullard. again. Boy, is he quick. Oh, what a play. Is he going to help this club? You can see why they're so optimistic about their future now getting Bullard back. Liberty continues to struggle. Hamilton has it stripped away by Bullard. He's showing no effects of that ligament problem in that knee at all. Well, he can pass it. He can shoot it. He runs the floor well, and there's Horton. Eddie Horton, that's where he belongs. Down in the low blocks, inside, along the baseline. 53-47, the Hawkeyes. 15-53 left in the game. Gary, a lot of fun working with you. This is an exciting game. You can see why there are five teams ranked in the top 20 in the Big Ten. Here's Hamilton. That area is open against the zone. If they can dump the ball from the wing down into the yellow area, right behind the point guy, Thompson. Now you take a look at Bullard sneaking along the baseline. He's got a good nose instinct for the ball. Take a look at him right here. Now he's going to use the reverse layup. Six foot ten, good head fake. And there's the little reverse. Oh, Matt Bullard, they love you at Carver Hawkeye Arena. Bullard is back. 53-49, Iowa. 53-49, Iowa. We're going to show you a stat that shows you what good rebounding Iowa has. Now, look, they are plus 11.9 margin. That's 11.9 per game more than their opponent. Second in the nation leads the Big Ten. So what happens? Your second chance points really pick up. Well, they have 17 to 2 for Illinois. Illinois normally a good rebounding team as well. In fact, last year when Illinois beat Iowa, they were one of the few teams to out-rebound Iowa 42 to 29 with their jumping jacks inside at Champaign Assembly.
Ashley Hall. That's impressive when you see the kind of ability athletically this Illinois team has. And they have 17 to 2 and second chance points. Good move by Tom Davis, taking Bullard out for a few minutes, let him get some rest and get him back down for the stretch of this game. Thompson back in the ball game after injuring that hand, having to come out. There's a pass kicked out of bounds. It'll be Iowa's ball. They'll reset the shot clock. Illinois had their share of injuries. They don't want to hear about Matt Buller. They know about their problems losing Kendall Gill. I said earlier, he and Barta were the best defensive tandem in a backcourt in the nation. They hope to get Gill back in postseason play. He's taking the cast off. He's on crutches and doing some swimming now. Illinois has gone to a zone defense. They're normally a man-to-man -man team. They did this against Indiana and beat the Hoosiers by zoning in the second half when they were down 10. Garner, nice pass to Marble, but the follow inside, and number 25 is there again. Ed Horton. Well, what happens with the zone? You don't get specific blockout assignments, and Horton finds the seam and gets the little layup. Here is Anderson, who's played so well in the second half. He may have traveled with that one. They a double dribble, but they don't whistle it down. Here comes Thompson, shoves it off to Garner. Look at Garner's quickness. Gets it outside to Lookinville, and they'll reset it. Iowa likes to overload against the zone. Iowa would love to right now overload, have four people against three on one side of the court. Notice it right there. Now they reverse it. Marble will try to slice inside, and look at Bill's got it momentarily, and it comes outside, and who's got it now? Liberty's on the floor, and it looks like first and ten. Hey, Hayden Fry, look at Hayden Fry on the sideline. He wants to sign these guys. It's recruiting time. Fry says, let me get some of these athletes. <laughs> Tom Davis says, you can't have them, Hayden. Well, they're going to sort this one out. You know, Hayden Fry started. You want a little story? I think we have a foul called out of all this. Jim Bain had his fist doubled. Let's see. That's what has happened. We have a foul. Charge to Marble. We got a foul charge on Marble. And Bardo still is down. You can call a foul here in about five guys. There's a look at Marble coming up short. There's a look at Bill, aggressive player. They're playing ballerina right there. Now there's the contact. You can have a foul there if you like. Now look at this here. Do they want the ball? Do they want the ball? Boy, Henson hey, is on the floor, the and uh, he's checking to see if Bardo's okay. So Jim Bain is saying, yeah, you can come on out. But uh, he is also getting his two cents worth in on the way to Bardo. And Bardo shaking up, and Lou Henson really has a beat-up team. There's Hayden Fry. He looks very calm right now. You know, Lou could have got nailed with a technical. He's allowed to come on the floor for an injured player, but he was jawing all the way on the floor. I thought the referees used good discretion. It's a close game not to bang him with the technical right there because he certainly wasn't getting out of hand. Bardo will have to see if he can come back. Small, you might recall, was hurt earlier, and he returned. You know, Hayden Fry painted his visitor's locker room at the stadium in pink. And Schembechler would come in, and he'd put all kinds of paper along it because he didn't want his players to see the pink locker room. They also have the pink locker room here in the uh, Iowa Fieldhouse. Hayden Fry, psychologically always looking for the edge. The man behind the dark glasses. You never know what he's thinking. He's having a great recruiting season, yeah. Bo Schembechler. Watch out. 55-49, the substitution made as coming into the game of Smith. There's Hamilton. Missed an easy one. He missed the slam jam early. And there's a rejection inside. It'll be Illinois ball. And Henson, look at Lou Henson. He is hot. He he's is really team. trying to fire him up right now. You got to be careful getting a team. Oh, he's talking to the official. A lot of witnesses. That's okay. Now, that's a tougher shot. It's not as easy as it looks, Gary. Hamilton up. And then we're going to see the block shot right here. To get Horton doing it all on the inside. Absolutely doing it all. That's an acrobatic move right there by Hamilton. Not an easy layup. Well, I and I have the basketball. They're down by six. 13.55 to go in the game. Anderson ducks inside. Baseline Liberty can't hang on. Liberty just doesn't look confident. Well, he there's, wants to get rid of the ball. There's Hamilton, and he is fouled. Garner reaches in and commits a foul. I think what happens to great high school players like Marcus Liberty, Terry Mills, they used to be an Uno number one, and it's very difficult for them to fit into a role. And they become very tentative, and they become what I call Kodak man. They take pictures, they watch, as opposed to getting involved in the action. Even though Mills had a big game yesterday for Bill Frieda, 17 points, eight rebounds. You get the feeling if Liberty could have that one big game, that one moment to get him over the top. Give me one more night. Please, please. <laughs> 
Substitutions. Two guys coming in now. Marble and Gibson have checked in for Iowa. Here's Bowman out to Smith. Inside to Hamilton. People all around him. He changed the shot, and the rebound is made by Armstrong. Three-pointer, Bullard. That's his first miss from that range, and the rebound cleared out now to Smith. Smith pulls up. Tough shot. That is his own rebound. And taken away by Gibson. That could have been a travel. Larry Smith really struggling at the point guard slot. Do they miss Kendall Gill as a defensive player and as a three-point shooter? Marble, nice pass to Gibson. Good catch by Gibson. Can't get it to go through, though. They're big, but a little bit slower now with Bullard and Jepson on the floor. Three-pointer. Rebound by Anderson, and he's fouled. Nick Anderson playing extremely well in the second half of play. Gary Iowa becomes a slower basketball team when they have Jepson at 7-1 on the floor and Matt Bullard at 6-10, even though he's a good runner. They're going to take Bullard out again. They're playing him like in two-minute well, cycles. Plus the fact he picked up his third foul, so they're going to get him out of there. Bullard will come out. Horton comes back in, as does Lookinville. And Gibson will check out of the ball game. Iowa had that big win over North Carolina when we had the Dustin Hoffman Award for Roy Marble going to the free throw line. I'll tell you, he was better than Hoffman and Rain Man with that act he pulled. <laughs> I'm glad you went on with that story. You lost me there for a moment. Remember that game yeah. down there where he went to the free throw line? <laughs> I have to say this, though. Billy Packer was all over that call and deserves credit. He's a great analyst. I have to give him credit. That's the first free throw of the ball game for Anderson. He now has 12 points. 55-50, Iowa by five. I thought that was one of the better basketball games of the year, but I think any time I was involved in a game against good athletes, you're going to see exciting basketball because they open up the court. They all of a sudden have a four-point game. The thing I like about Illinois this year, I said it earlier, they're not going to quit. They're not going to roll over. They've proved that time and time again this season. They were down by 10 at... That game with Indiana pulled it out, and there is a baseline move, and it's going to be a basketball out of the bounds. It's going to be Iowa. Luckinville will bring it in. They have to get the ball in the hands of Kenny Battle a little bit more offensively, Illinois. Armstrong now will reset it at the 12:41 mark. They get good spacing offensively. Going to overload against the zone. There's four people to that side. Then reverse it. They run a man on the baseline. Thompson has a strip by Anderson, regains it. See, Thompson's going to run the baseline. As soon as the ball goes, he overloads. That's the strong side of the court. Wherever the ball is, you call that the strong side. Well-drilled basketball team. Tom Davis, an excellent teacher. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Marble to Lookinville. Lookinville, a lot of traffic. Overshoots it, but Horton's there. There's the horse. There's the wide body. The big fella inside, holding the baseline. Ed Horton. 20 points now for Horton. Six-point lead for the Hawkeyes. Remember, Illinois wanted him to red shirt. They didn't want him to play his freshman year. That's why he's wearing an Iowa uniform. There's that zone. And for Hamilton, Horton comes up with it. Poor angle to make that pass. They got to bring the ball to the wing and jam it into the three-second area. Armstrong from three. Lookinville brings it down, and Lookinville traveled with the ball. thought he was pushed but he did travel with it they love their Hawkeyes here it's unbelievable the love affair that goes on in this state with Iowa basketball Iowa football Iowa athletics well this crowd isn't reticent now six point lead for Iowa 11 33 left to go Iowa by six let's go to Cheryl Miller all right Gary with me is coach Fry, the football coach for Iowa and, uh, Coach Wright, what do you think about the game so far? Well, it's a great environment. It's no place for a weak heart. Of course, I'm a football coach. I wouldn't know about all those turnovers. Well, Big Ten has been very competitive, not only on the basketball floor, but also on the football field. And uh, what is your team going to look like next season? Well, you know, we always have an opportunity. We've got a great program in all the sports at the University of Iowa, and uh, our football team had a bad season. We still went to a bowl game, so we look for better things in the future. And we'll look for better things for next future Thank also. You. All right, thanks, Coach Fry. Let's go back to Gary. I tell you, they had an exciting football team. Chuck Hartley, at quarterback. Marv Cook, an outstanding tight end. But right now, we're back to basketball. 57-51 Iowa. Too many ties in football. They should play off a period and go out with a winner. Now, stay out of uh, football. We had three ties, Iowa. I don't like those ties. That's like kissing your sister. <laughs>
All right, here we go with the zone right here. One, two, two, Gary. See the yellow area? Somehow they got to slash a guy into that high post area and go like high low. Right behind the guy on the top of the circle. Small is in the ball game trying to break open in the middle. Or they're sagging in there. They just haven't gotten anything See, going. See right there, once you bring the ball up high, the guy in the point comes up. Bardo, move oh, that basket will count, and he's fouled by Moses. What a competitor Steve Bardo is. And he wants to be involved in broadcasting. I interviewed him the other day on radio. What a communicator this kid is. There he is, Ed, and would be in serious trouble with an L here. Armstrong with Bowman on him. Horton will back it out. Here's the man-to-man -man defense. They play a lot of zone out of that man-to-man. -man. They really get into a lot of help areas. Like Illinois for years has been an outstanding defensive team on the Lou Hens. That was a nice pass by Horton, but Marble can't finish the playoff. Let's see if Bowman can finish it off. See, he's a scorer. He's and a scorer. the basket is a three-pointer. They were late on the signal, but it's a three-pointer, and we're tied up. He can shoot the trif. He can shoot the trifecta, Gary. He's a tray man. Excellent ball game. Big Ten action. Horton gets Iowa the lead again. When in doubt, go to the big guy inside. He locks on a box. Good entry. He has 22 points. His career high is 26. He's had that on two occasions. And a scramble, and Moses has picked up another foul. Just, Tom Davis is in disbelief. Look at James with a big smile. He's from California. Said bye-bye to the coast. Came out here. Tom Davis at Stanford got tired of losing at Stanford. That's why he headed out here to Iowa. Well, I think he thought he had a real chance to win the national championship here at Iowa as well. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. Coach Montgomery doing a solid job with Stanford in the Pac-10. Todd Lichty has to be on a lot of All-American teams. Boy, he has played well. You see Moses coming out of the ball game. Lichty had a big week this week. Three fouls against Moses. Two of them back-to-back -back here in the last few seconds. See here, if you can occupy the guy at a point, slide a guy to the foul line area, and go like a high-low entry. That's where Battle's got to get himself in the lane. Into Small. Small getting jostled around. Out it comes to Bardo. See, Boy, they got to respect Bowman, don't they? Well, Kenny Battle doesn't like the zone at all. He'd rather be played man-to-man. -man. The zone negates his great inside ability. See, right there, they missed him. Yep. I there agree. From the corner, three-pointer by Bowman again, and Battle pushing off. Let's see if he's got the foul. Let's wait. The Bullard is down. Ron Winter is still sorting it out. Too much conversation by the officials. you got to blow the whistle with authority and make a call that you're in charge of the play, Gary. I don't think they've made the call yet. Now they're going to give the ball to not, Illinois. Not good officiating right there. Too slow with the, with the call. You blow the whistle, blow it with authority, make the call, and too much conversation with the coaches. So forget about the foul. It's just going to be Illinois' basketball. Please don't let me get too tough on that. <laughs> the Zebras. I'm surprised. Here is Anderson trying to follow, and he fouled him. Anderson frustrated there, trying to come over the back. See, that's what I like to see. The official blows the whistle, makes the call. Let's go to the other end. Or take the ball out of bounds, not in the bonus. So at the 9.34 mark, Iowa with a two-point lead and with the basketball. I'm going to pick my old Zebra team before this year's over. Get you five guys that can really blow the whistle. See, that's the way to break the pressure, too. Just throw the ball over the top. Illinois going to a little pressure. We got a game, 9.29, a deuce. Iowa has 16 fouls. Illinois with three thus far. Is Horton looking for some help and shoots it instead. Small can't handle him. That's like a man against a boy. 61-57, Iowa. Anderson on the transition break. Doesn't get it. Reloads it. And Bullard stripped it, and Bullard is called for his fourth foul. Anderson, what a jumping jack. He's also a clutch player. Matt Bullard definitely doesn't show any kind of emotion. Look he knows. Me. He got him, Gary. Did he? he Let's see. Got him. You think he did? Huh? Well, with one eye, it's my left eye. I'm looking <laughs> to my left. I'm blind on my right, but I still think he got him. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Good replay. I thought he had all ball initially. Remember we had that call against Georgia Tech as a look at Bullard when Larry Limbo missed that call, but Larry was a man enough to tell me, Dick, I flat out missed it because Georgia Tech deserved to beat Illinois. They did everything right that day. I happen to be a big fan of Bobby Kremens. That's far Anderson is two of two from the strike. 13 points. It's got to be tough to concentrate when you know your mom is in a hospital with a lot of broken bones, a lot of injuries suffered in an accident on January 26th. She's over at Holy Cross Hospital, and I know Alberta, everybody from Illinois, sends their best wishes for a speedy recovery. 
Looking, Bill, has it taken away by Battle, and eventually Iowa's got it. We now have nine minutes to go in the game. Thompson. Oh, what an athlete. He's going to be a tremendous player here at Iowa. And then he commits a foul as he tries to strip the ball from behind. But that was some move by Thompson. Ray Thompson down the middle. Tom Davis told me he thinks he can be his best defensive pressure player he's ever had. He's got the long arms. I mean, is he determined to go down the lane right here Ooh. and score? He looked bigger in 6'5", didn't he? There's a lot of people feel that he will break Roy Marble's career scoring record by the time he's out. He's already right on pace with what Marble scored his freshman year. Well, remember this. Marble had a play in an era where he had to share a lot of points with the B.J. Armstrongs and the Hortons. This kid, I think, is going to be really a big-time scorer next year and the year after. Anderson, and he doesn't get the roll. Here comes Armstrong. Let's see if B.J. makes a good, intelligent play right here. Shoots up with Bowman on top of him, and he buries it. Not a bad play right there, nope. Gary. Good boy, 65-58. Well, he didn't force that shot. He squared his body. Anderson went straight up that time and put it away. He doesn't want to lose. He really has a, such a tough mental aspect about him. Look at Marble. He hits the deck. Rebound by Illinois. They trail by five. Everybody I talk to says that Nick Anderson flat out hates to lose. I'd love to coach a kid like that. See where it says Big Ten? You got to slide somebody right in that area, right where it says Big Ten area. Right in that area. Instead, Bowman will try a three pointer. Trying to keep it alive inside was Anderson. Battle's got it. Tough shot by Battle and ripped out of there. Not a good by shot Thompson. by Kenny Battle at all. Little shake and bake. Oh, what a pass. What a pass. Little, get a timeout, Lou Henson. Get a T.O. They're ready to blow open. Get a T.O., Lou Do. They do. 7-point lead as Marble has 10 for the game. And Iowa now on a surge. No one uses the bounce pass better than Iowa. Tom Davis is absolutely all the time teaching bounce pass, bounce pass. ABC's College Basketball will continue after this message and a word from your local stations. The storyline, Kenny Battle having a tough time against the zone. Look at the second chance points for Iowa and Horton having a powerful game. Horton really a glass eater today, chewing up the boards, chewing up the glass, 14 rebounds, and that's why they're up seven. And any time they need a big basket, Horton's getting it on the interior. And your point was well taken about Battle. They've taken him out of the game with the defense they're using. Well, the zone defense negates his one-on-one -on -one ability around the basket. Seven-point lead for the Hawkeyes, 7.30 left in the game. You see Hamilton trying to penetrate inside. Anderson changed hands. Hamilton and Anderson both have it. And Anderson, no, they're going to wave the basket off. He oh, oh, I can't believe that call. I agree with you, Lou Henson. I agree with you. Go ahead, Lou. Get a little angry. And Lou's going to get a technical. Oh, technical, He's not technical. Careful. He got oh, one. That's Jim that, Lane. Oh, that could cost him a game right here. That's big T right here. You know, Ron Winter was the guy that Henson was charging. He did not give him the technical. It was Bain. Let me tell you how big that play is. Instead of them having the deuce to make it a five-point game, Gary, they now wave the basket, pull a technical, two shots, and get the ball. Now, you tell me right here as we watch Anderson go up right here. He goes up. He's hanging in the air. Now he comes back with the offensive rebound. They fight. Now watch the legs. There's no walk. Nope. There's the walk. He doesn't lift the pivot foot. Then you wonder why coaches have fits on a sideline. Oh, if the officiating could ever match the quality of play and athletes in this league, it'd be amazing. I thought it was so interesting, though, that Henson charged winner. He did not give him the technical. It was Jim Bain, who was clear on this side of the floor, that ran over and gave him the tee. I said that last year, Gary, and I, you know, I don't want to be tough. It's not all the officials. But for some reason, the officiating is inferior in the Big Ten compared to the coaching and athletes they have in the league. There are just too many good athletes. There's no way this team should go home with an L on a play like this. The key so, to watch are the feet, and none of them were moving. But it's not only that call. It's calls all year long. And you wonder why the Bob Knights, the Bill Feeders, and all the coaches are so upset. 
Nine point lead now for the Hawkeyes. We approach seven minutes to go in the game. There's some great officials in this league, but believe me, not enough. Look at Bill, who's been in there to distribute the ball, to protect the ball, set up their offense. Thompson to Jepson, and here's looking Bill. They wouldn't even play Jepson. See Hamilton, he just leaves them alone out there. He's strictly a passer. When they had Brad Lowhouse in that role two years ago, he could shoot the ball from outside. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds, four, three, with two, and battle with the rebound. Well, see, nobody rotates back after the shot. Oh, a nice oh! pass. Battle put it away and a foul on Marble. Oh, the Duncan machine. I don't know how Marble got the foul. I, uh, it didn't look to me like he was even on that play, but they whistled number 23 down. What a dunk right there. You talk about a vicious slam jam bam. They're going to see the pass by Bowman, and there's flight number 33. Flight number 33. Well, it was Thompson that committed the foul. It wasn't Marble. Marble picks up his second foul. Look at it again. You take a look right here. There's Bowman with a little kick to the trailer. They communicate the trailer on the play. Marble's not even near him. No, nope, he might have reached in. Maybe that's what they thought. The missed free throw, and we're going to have another foul. This is on Armstrong, reaching in on Bardo. And right now, some temper starting to get a little raw as far as those nerves are concerned. Well, it's up to the official on the floor to take charge. We got an experienced guy, Jim Bain, on the floor. Malcolm Helpful's been around. Ron Winter doesn't have the experience of the other two. Bullard will come in. He'll be playing with four fouls as Lookinville checks out. Boy, he doesn't get any less intense next week, does it? How would you like to blow the whistle with Gene Cady and Bobby Knight stalking oh, the sidelines? Wow. Anytime you have in Indiana and Purdue, I believe the three great rivalries within state, within a state, are Duke and North Carolina, Louisville and Kentucky, and Indiana and Purdue. I did the first game, and it was a one-pointer. And let me tell you something: the fans really get into it. Indiana won in Lafayette. 69-63, Bardo, and Bardo now makes it 69-64, Bardo with 12. Hey guys, you want to be guards? Come on! <laughs> He's only 6'5". The lane. And Battle tries to keep it out of there. Bullard gets one up in the air, and Battle comes down with it, and that's Battle for you, the tenacity that he has. It's interesting, Bowman's on the floor instead of Smith playing on the floor right now. They want Bowman for his shooting ability. Illinois seemingly survived that technical. They're getting right back in this one as that shot will not go for Hamilton. That's where you want to get the ball, inside. And Battle has committed the foul, and now Bardo and Horton exchanging pleasantries. I tell you, you can just see a lot of emotion. The nerves and the emotions really starting to flare, and you can understand why, because of how hard these two teams are playing. Well, you know, in the Big Ten, I talked about it a little bit earlier, Gary, you don't have a postseason tournament, so winning the league becomes important. First of all, I think they're archaic by not having a postseason tournament, and I know Bob Knight's definitely against the postseason, and I totally disagree with him. I think all the positives exceed the negatives, and they should have a tournament. It'd be great in terms of helping the non-revenue sports with the dollars they can raise, and plus it gives a lot of excitement to the alumni and the fans. From the far side, Thompson tries one. Rebound is cleared by Hamilton, and Illinois needs something good to happen on this trip down the floor, and Bowman almost had that one get away from him. Battle's got to be a little bit more active offensively against the zone. He's not moving at all. There he is inside. He's got to move inside. Boy, did he then. He has 10 points. Three-point game now with 5.09 to go. Armstrong baseline, he's fouled, and a basket will count. Hamilton committed the foul. He shows a lot of strength right there. He hangs and a lot of poise to deliver this basket. There are a lot of good small guards in the country, and this is one of the best. Here he is with a little stutter step. I call it a hockey move. Now he hangs. He gets banged. A little bit soft on a foul there, but they did make contact. He gets the roll. You think of all the good little guards. And I'll tell you whose stock has really risen as a point guard. Pooh Richardson at UCLA. Marty Blake told me today, the guru who rates all the people for the NBA, that Mr. Richardson is being thought of very highly by the NBA people. Armstrong with 19 points. He's 7 of 8 from the strike. Three-point play. He's got good follow through, excellent touch. There's Tom Davis, knows that this is a big game with three losses already. 
Gives them a little blow right now, getting ready for the stretch. For the stretch as we have 505 -oh left in this one. Running the baseline is Bardo. Nice pass to Anderson. Anderson's going to take it in. He's just so outstanding in the open court. He's made the order for the NBA. He's an excellent open floor player. He now has 18 points. 72-68, four-point game. You see they swing the ball side to side. Now they go through the defense. Trying to get some good angles to the boxes. They love to post people down in the boxes. They pass the ball well. You can see they work on that fundamental every day in practice. Out of bounce passes. Always trying to create angles for their entries. Armstrong's Strong's getting ready to come back in, Dick. Yeah, they just give him a minute break. They want to score on the floor, naturally, in the last four using, minutes. Using the shot clock. Ten seconds on the shot clock. 4.21 game clock. Six seconds. Looking, Bill, hasn't shot that up, and the rebound is cleared by Marble. Big, big play by Roy Marble. Six-point lead with 4.07. It's such a great asset when you have athletes blessed with tremendous quickness and jumping ability. Marble at 12 points. Looking, Bill, going for the steal. Here's Anderson, and he's making things happen. Followed by Hamilton. Lowell Hamilton up above the rim. Somebody not getting back. Marble is going to hurt him, and they're going to foul him. They made him go earn this because he really was taking that home for a deuce, and they're going to make him go to the free throw line. What skywalkers we have. We got elevator men here. I'm telling you something. What high risers. I think Illinois is tired. They didn't get back on defense that time. A couple of guys men over, clutching their shorts. Look at a tip right here by Hamilton. Great touch. Good rhythm to that. Now he's a little slow retreating defensively. At the stripe now goes Marble, who made that big basket a moment ago. The Defense foul was on Anderson, his second. Defensive transition is so important when you're meeting a team that plays on up tempo. Look at Marble right now. He thinks he's got a deuce. But they hustle back, and there's the contact by Hamilton. Marble, one of one from the line. He has 13 points. The all-time leading career scorer here for Iowa. Greg Stokes had the record until this year. Five-point lead for the Hawkeyes, and now six. What a beautiful arena this is. Great view for the fans. So P.J. will come in, but right now we've got a timeout. 3.47 left. Second-ranked Illinois finds themselves down by six. Join us for all the action next Sunday right here on ABC. Look at this. Arizona ranked fourth in the country, defeating the Huskies of Washington. Lou Olson, who, of course, coached here at Iowa, winning that, and Georgetown over Villanova. Villanova was beaten earlier this year by the Wildcats of Arizona. Lou Olson's done a great job wherever he's been. He's a Frank Lloyd Wright. He's an architect. Alec, Bobby Cremins, they're builders of programs. He was responsible, really, in a way, for this beautiful facility. Illinois has two timeouts remaining. Iowa for the possession arrow. Goes Iowa's way. Illinois has committed 16 fouls already in the one and one as far as Iowa is concerned. Six point lead now for the Hawkeyes. Trying to reverse the ball a little bit. Swing it side to side. There it is for the open shot. That's oh, that's the corner. He's the shooter. Look at Horton grab that one down. What a bundle of rebounds by the big guy, Horton. He was psyched up today playing against Illinois. Now they're going to use some clock, spread the court. See, Bullard really becomes important late in the game because he's a good shooter and a good ball handler. They played eight weeks without him, Gary, or I believe they'd be number one. Just killing some time. They were starting the five-second count on Armstrong. Had to get rid of it. And now he's holding him. Yep, he's Bardo holding him. reached in and committed the foul. And Jim Bain almost gave him a technical. Bardo said something, and Bain whirled and almost gave him the tee. But I think it's a solid decision by Jim Bain. He showed his experience right there by not calling a technical on a kid in that situation. Depends I guess I don't know what he said. Him, right? <laughs> I don't know what he said. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, substitution now. Anderson will come back in for Illinois. Liberty will check out. And Liberty, again, just hasn't been a factor in this game. Was scoreless in the last one. And here today, struggling, even though he started for the second game in a row. His confidence is so shattered, Gary. You just can look at his body English. Tells you the whole story. No enthusiasm. No life. He just is a passive player right now, feeling all the pressure of not being able to live up to all the adjectives coming out of high school. 
Armstrong down the stretch has been busy at the free throw line. He's now 9 of 10 from the stripe. Seven point lead for Iowa. I told Sherman Douglas last week, I said, Sherman, I'm picking you today, number one point guard. He said, yeah, that'll last about a week and then you'll go for Armstrong. <laughs> I said, boy, he knows me well. <laughs> Off and wrong, but never in doubt. Huh? Yeah. Eight-point lead now for Iowa. See, it is the pressure. Look at Thompson at the top of it. He tries to take the angle away for the dribble, for the reverse move. I like Ray Thompson. Look at those long arms. And he sinks inside. Look, look. He bothers the guy up the point. Added out of bounds by Armstrong. 242 left in the game. People want to know why I get so excited about a game. How could you not have a passion and love for this emotion and intensity? What they say here locally, this when you come into the ballparks, it's like heaven. Oh, I love it. Anderson going baseline, and Anderson able to keep a minute. Is he for real, Gary? Is he a legitimate big-time player? 20 points for Nick Anderson, and again, some question whether he would play today. I love players that want the basketball late in the game when the game's on the line. This guy wants it right now. He's going to clear out. The Bowman can go ahead fake defensively. Spreading the court. See, they're going to try to spread the court. Try to eliminate the double team. Have some good spacing. Notice how they're not together. How they're trying to open it up for the back door cut. Now Bowman hit the out. deck, and Armstrong just trying to milk the clock. Kicks it back out. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Watch Horton's ready to go for a backdoor move for the boxes. Oh, they had Horton on the box. Marble from the corner, and he is fouled by Bardo, and that's not a smart foul at all. Not a good foul. Not an intelligent play, but an experienced defensive player of the quality of this guy. That was a bad shot. He's falling away. He's on the baseline, and now you put him on the line. They really didn't get a good shot for all of that. And then he bails him out, Bardo does, as Liberty now comes in, and Hamilton will leave. Just get a hand up. Just get a hand up. Get his hand straight up. Don't make contact. Not a good play by Steve Bardo. He's too good a defensive player. Bardo with his fourth foul of the ball game. You hate to see clubs hurt by injuries, especially when you're looking at clubs that have all the parts. Illinois without Kendall Gill. Louisville, they were brilliant last night playing without Purvis Ellison. In fact, right now, a lot of people believe Louisville with Ellison would be the best team in the country. Boy, they were good, and uh, of course, Ellison's a real scare, but they expect him back after about a 10-day absence. 80-72. Illinois with a three-point attempt by Bowman and rebound Anderson. He's the leading scorer for the line. Iowa 20 as Horton comes up with a deflected shot. Anderson trying to do it all for and Illinois. And they eventually get it out to Bullard. Oh, they missed him down this there. There it is. Oh, a little showtime. Well, Bill Frieda, get your club ready for Thursday night. They want you here. There's a three-pointer, and timeout call by Illinois. They have one timeout remaining. A minute seven to go. Iowa, 82, Illinois, 75. The Hawkeyes trying to stay in the big dead race. Great game. I tell, we talked about this being a must game for Iowa. An 82-75 with a minute seven. It looks like it's going to be win number 17. They'll go to five and three. Oh, what a scramble it's going to be in the Big Ten. Well, it's an unbelievable race. Right now, Indiana's got the lead, but they got four games on the road coming up, and it's not going to be easy for them to win away from home. I think Bobby Knight's done an amazing job having that team overachieve all year long. I still think Michigan's going to be the big noise. And I think pound for pound, inch for inch, they're the most talented the team in America and I really believe they're going to find Terry Mills and they are going to be murdered down the stretch. Well this Iowa team has six games in February at home only two on the road as that's broken up and on the inline, line it's going to go to Iowa. Liberty hustling down on that play. They throw the long pass over the top look at him like a wide receiver a little rice Montana to rice Rice says, I get no publicity. It goes to Montana. He's out of bounds. Why is Rice crying? He got all the money. He's a star. Forget about publicity. They'll come to you, Rice. Uh, there is a foul. 
<laughs> Larry Smith got his money's worth on that foul. Armstrong, the recipient of the foul, as Thompson now will come into the ball game. You know, it's amazing, Gary. You talked about it on top of the show. After all the publicity, front page story today, the Des Moines Register, all about the problems with the Iowa basketball team in terms of the uh, drug situation. Three players, according to the paper, uh, went to a drug rehabilitation center at the expense of the athletic department. We wondered how they would react, and they have reacted here. It shows kids are resilient. Yeah, you know, I don't think they deal with those kind of things like most people. The reality, some of those things doesn't sit in. As now, Armstrong for the game, Dick, is 11 of 12 from the free throw line. He's got the nice touch. Look at the bench. Get a little more excited. According to the reports, the uh, university naturally is protecting the rights of the kids by the confidenti confidentiality and not allowing uh, anyone to get who the people are that are involved. And the bottom line is, though, that all the kids involved have not had a problem since August. There's Lou Yeah, he's upset because they didn't get Bowman in the ball game. They didn't sound a buzzer to get him in in time. Now they do, but Lou upset about the mechanics of the game right now. He really has to be upset about the fact that his team is not a healthy team. I mean, that's got to hurt you as a coach mentally. He knows what he has, and yet he can't play with a full deck. This club was outstanding with Kendall Gill. There is Bardo in an air ball from three-point range. Bardo was a much better player when Gill was on the floor. And there is going to be a foul, and uh, Anderson committing the foul. Battle was two. I tell you what... What Gill did, he really gave them a defensive look they didn't have. He would come out and challenge the opponent. He would change things defensively, and then he was a great three-point shooter. Yeah, he has the great ability of shooting the long-range shot. So what that does, it brings the defense out and allows a guy like Battle to be effective on the interior. They expect to get Kendall Gill back, they think, at the end of the year. See, they'll be, know. Dick, they'll be one and three now since Kendall Gill's gone out, and it shows you how much they've missed him. And then it starts to hurt you psychologically. Your players start to really believe they can't win, and that really becomes a major problem. Horton having a super, super day with 26 points, but from the free throw line, he's only 6 of 11. He also has 16 rebounds. There is Anderson from outside, and Nick Anderson is just playing a great game as Illinois now uses their final timeout well, you for know, 40 two, seconds. Two possessions, Gary. If they can force a turnover somehow, remember two possessions with a three-point shot, they can get themselves back in this game. Trail by six. 84-78. Nine Frank, Iowa on their way to a victory to move their record to 11-0 at home this year. Well, who's the star of stars, Gary? I think that's the biggest lock since Yale. Ed Horton today has been unbelievable. The biggest lock since Yale? <laughs> he has 26 points, 17 rebounds. There's Anderson. He hasn't given up. He hasn't quit yet. Nick Anderson. I told you, the kid hates to lose. Four-point difference in the game. Anderson with 25 points. And that's Troy Skinner, number 11. They got in him here because he's such a good free throw shooter. They just got to bring the ball out. Till some time, get it away from the foul. Triple team, and they'll pick uh, Liberty as the guilty party. As Marble got, uh, looks like something in his eye, and they're looking him over. So Troy Skinner came in there on that trip down the floor. He is a freshman out of Palmer, Iowa, and they want him in there for free throw shooting. Now they take him out. They get the rebounders in as Horton will come back into the game. They want to get Horton out of there, not send him to the line. Four-point game with 13 seconds. Illinois has no timeouts remaining. It's amazing. University of California, Riverside, ranked number one in Division II NCAA basketball. It's an amazing story. They beat Iowa. They send that tape all over John Massey and his team. They want everybody to see it. They hit 21 for 36 three-pointers to beat the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa has been good from the line. Remember now, they are last in the Big Ten in free throw shooting, but they've really done the job here today. He's 5 of 5, Marble is, from the strike. That's where you win a lot of games down the stretch. There's a very disappointed Illinois team. Hey, you know who coached here? Dick Schultz, who's ahead of the NCAA, and what a great addition he is because he feels and acts like a coach, and he's doing a fantastic job. He replaced Ralph Miller, who headed out to Oregon State. That ball deflected out of bounds. Illinois will still have it with 12 seconds left to go. I got to think three right here. I was going to get a timeout. They have 
three timeouts left as they ask for the timeout with 12 seconds, 86-80. Well, as we mentioned, looking ahead, the next game for Illinois is Thursday at home against Gary Williams Buckeyes of Ohio State. And then Iowa gets to play Michigan here on Thursday. That's a heck of a matchup. Michigan's got to prove that they can win consistently on the road. Glenn Rice is having a phenomenal year. They have to have consistent performances out of their backcourt. But Terry Mills has got to give them the job in the trenches, rebounding and scoring. He's got a world of talent. Well, Kendall Gill, maybe if Illinois can hang on, somehow slug it out down the stretch, get into postseason play, which you figure they will be. They're still 18-3 and three after today. They could really be something maybe late. But, you know, Lou Henson has really been maligned for the fact that his teams have not done well in tournament play. Well, you know, you look at Lou Henson, and you also talk Bill Frieder, and you talk about guys like Jimmy Beheim for years. They're what I would call nominees for my Guy V. Lewis Award. Win and win during a season, but don't get a lot of recognition. And as soon as they lose, those three guys could never survive 14 and 14 seasons because they're not flamboyant. They don't have all the one-liners, all of the Jimmy Valvanos and people like that that have personality as coaches. Today, with the great visibility of television, Gary, personality's almost becoming a part of being a successful coach. 12 seconds left to go in the game, a six-point lead for Iowa. And that's really unfortunate when you think of the records of the three guys I mentioned. They've had unbelievable numbers. Anderson forced that shot from outside. The follow, the slam dunk that time by Bardo. Four seconds, three. They don't even have to inbound the ball. This game is over. They love it, and they survive and hang in the Big Ten. Three losses for Iowa, three for Illinois, three for Michigan, and only one for the general Robert Montgomery Knight and the Hoosiers. Iowa now goes to 11-0 at home. And they, after playing only one home game in January, will have six here at Carver Hawkeye Arena in Iowa City. So Iowa, 86, Illinois, 82, as Tom Davis is still alive and well, they're in the Big Ten hunt. It's been great, Gary. Enjoyed working. It's just tremendous athletes. An exciting day here in Iowa. We saw some great basketball. And so the final 86-82 for Dick Vitale. I'm Gary Bender. And Saturday, the professional boiler bowlers to ball coverage. You'll see Louisville take on UCLA or Purdue battle the Hoosiers of Indiana. It's been a good one here at Carver Hawkeye Arena as Iowa remains unbeaten at home.